So I have to say, good morning, Miami, or buenos dias, Miami. I am so pleased to be here. I can't thank you enough for inviting me. Any congratulations for pulling this off. I go around to a lot of cities and a lot of places where there is innovation sort of at the core of what's going on. And just Miami has all the right flavor and creativity in addition to what you're gonna bring to bear uh, over time. <clears throat> so what I'd like to do today is give you a little bit of a view of what we're trying to do um, overall in innovation, partnering with a number of different leaders. Um, if I could bring the slides up, there we go. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a sense, who am I, first of all, you're probably wondering, and what do I do with regards to innovation? So I head up GE um, Ventures and also Healthy Imagination, which I'll tell you a little bit about because it is also about innovation. My background, I have about 30 years being in the healthcare industry, but what I've spent a lot of time doing is really around breakthrough technologies, bringing them to the marketplace, and really figuring out new business model innovation so that we can drive growth in wherever I've been. So I've been in many different corporations. I've also been a VC in Silicon Valley. I've spent the last 18 years in Silicon Valley, and I'm now at GE for the last two years, really spending time on innovation initiatives. So let me give you a sense. And it's funny, because I didn't speak to Manny about this, but he talked about, if you don't innovate, what happens to you? You die. And as I showed you some of the things that was going on with regards to some of those slides, and I can't go backwards, otherwise I would show you again, where are some of those companies? Polaroid, Kodak, for that matter. Newspapers, what's gonna happen to, that, to those? There is so much disruption going on, and a lot of it is not just technology. It used to be that everybody thought that in fact what was happening is that technology would come and disrupt what was going on. Now it's a combination of, of technology, but also it's around business model innovation. So just to give you a sense of how much disruption there is, especially in Silicon Valley, um, where I hail from, take a look at this slide. So over the last 40 years, Silicon Valley and other types of innovation hubs have been backed by VCs to create big juggernauts. And look at some of these stats. 20% of US GDP is represented by venture-backed companies. 11% of private sector jobs were created by venture-backed companies. And in addition to that, only 0.5% of the R&D spend was actually attributed to that because it was really around venture, long-term asset class. You know some of these names, so I won't go through them with you. Um, but needless to say, I mean, Intel uh, was also a venture-backed company, Amgen, Genentech, you name the industry. And in fact, if you look at this, if you look at semiconductors and biotechnology, over 80% of the revenue that come out of those major industries have in fact come from venture-backed companies. So it gives you a little sense that if Miami, in fact, can harness this type of innovation, the type that is around entrepreneurs, and really make it grow, I think I read something about over the next 10 years, there's going to be about 17,000 new jobs um, as it relates to this type of innovation coming together. It's major growth for any particular institution, industry, or government. <clears throat> so this is a survey that was done by PwC. And what they did last fall is they took 1,757 C-suite executives across all sorts of industries and essentially asked the question around what are the levers for growth? And the answer that came back was in fact, innovation is the biggest lever for growth. And what they were able to find out about this lever for growth is the following, and that is of those companies, of the 1,757 companies that essentially were surveyed, those that were considered innovative, and I'll go through that in a little bit, are actually growing at twice the rate than the average of those companies. And in fact, over a five-year time horizon, represent about $0.5 billion more in revenue than, their, than, again, the average or least innovative um, peers. Now, take that one step further. And in essence, <laughs> when they thought about this notion of innovation, 93% of the executives said, I'm absolutely going to drive growth through innovation, and they believe that to be the case. 81% of the executives said, though, I don't know how to do that. We don't know how to do that. So there is a little bit of a mismatch as it relates to this incredible disruption that's happening, 
in this world of innovation and the way companies are actually going to drive it. And so you're going to see a tremendous amount of activity around companies to actually bring teams together, similar to what Miami is trying to do. And you're going to see it in major cities around the world. So let me spend a moment and tell you a little bit about GE and give you a sense of what we're trying to do overall. And GE and, and, and the different types of innovation, by the way, that companies can do. And, and, and before I even go into GE, I, I forgot to mention one thing, and that is when they did this survey, what I found really interesting was if you had asked about five years ago what the levers for growth are going to be, and many of you might know this, the answer would have been globalization. And of course, the answer would have been all around China. Right? Now, sh sure, you're still going to need um, globalization. That ain't me, by the way. <laughs> That's just happening somehow. Um, <laughs> magic. Um, and, and just to give you a sense, the other part of it is M&A, which used to be such a powerful driver of growth for corporations, really now represents about 2% of predictions in terms of how it's going to drive growth. So innovation for everybody is everything, and there's many different ways to innovate. One of the ways to innovate is, in fact, as GE does, which is internal. So GE spends about $6 billion a year across the world in many different innovation centers to drive innovative growth. We, you know, one of the measures for that is, of course, patenting. And we file about 2,000 patents a year, just to give you a sense. We have about 37,000 active patents at this particular time. When you look at other ways to grow, and this is part of what you're trying to do here in Miami, is the notion of venturing. So right now, corporate venture capital is really hot. Every single major <laughs> uh, company, in fact, the top 30 of the global fortune um, companies are represented in Silicon Valley now with a CVC except for one, and that one is Exxon. And they're very, they, they, they've declared they're not going to do this at this particular time. So when you look at GE, we've been now in venture and in Silicon Valley for about two years. I opened up the Silicon Valley offices for GE. Um, and just to give you a sense where we're investing, we're investing in the pillar of software, as you might imagine, very disruptive area, the pillar of healthcare, which is really my passion, and then the pillar of energy, which is extraordinarily disruptive. And many of the trends across these industries are very, very similar. I'll give you a quick taste of what I mean by that. Um, and that is when you think about the areas of healthcare and energy in particular, You've got the world of centralized to distributed. You've got the world of CapEx to OpEx. So you're paying per click, per scan, per drink, per electron now versus paying for it on a capital basis. You're looking at consumerization. You're looking at retailization. You're looking at the world of digitization. And Manny mentioned a lot of this during um, his opening. And when you think about that, here's another sort of comparator for these, is who owns the data that in fact is disrupting us so much? In healthcare, it's the hospital or the insurance companies. In energy, who owns the data? The utilities. And yet, where is everything going? Consumerization. So this disruption is really key and very opportunistic for what Miami is trying to do which is all around this world of really trying to disrupt and create new models. The last one that I didn't mention is advanced manufacturing. And Manny talked about the Industrial Revolution. Well, what's being talked about now is the third Industrial Revolution. Why is that? So think about the following things that are happening in all these industries, but particularly in advanced manufacturing. It's the convergence of all the things I'm about to mention that is making this possible. So you have 3D manufacturing. Who would have thunk that you could, you could print food? You could print, and I'll show you some of the stuff that we're printing, which is quite amazing for jet engines, as an example. The ability to bring robotics right next to labor, human labor. Before it wasn't possible, it wasn't as safe. Now it's fully integrated into the world of manufacturing. The ability to take data and create brilliant machines, that's what we call them at GE, or brilliant factories, those that really understand when the machines are going to go down or when the machines, in fact, are running at their peak and being able to take all that data because all of these sensors are coming together. In addition to that, when you think about all of the elements associated to just 
bringing together the disruption of business models for supply chains, combined with 3D manufacturing, you no longer have to transport these things, these parts, from long distances, because you can create them on site, or you're able to actually prototype an actual component part very, very quickly. So what it's doing is creating this revolution where everybody can be in manufacturing. And I would say to Miami, as you think about where you're growing, this is an area that in fact will create jobs, and they will be jobs not only on the line, but also knowledge jobs. So it's an incredible opportunity um, coming forward. <clears throat> Very quickly, in a snapshot, we have about $200 million per year that comes into GE Venture, so you compare it to a ventures fund, it's about a, a billion dollar venture fund. Um, uh, you know, it's an evergreen fund. We have 50 plus portfolio companies now. Our typical check size is somewhere between a million to 15 million. We invest in many stages of growth. We have a barbell strategy, which is 30% in the early stage, so seed and series A, and then in the growth stages, so series C and beyond. And you can see we're, we're, we're pretty diverse. The offices, we've got Silicon Valley, Boston, Houston, and Israel. And people might go, Houston, remember, we have one of the biggest oil and gas companies in the world, and therefore, Houston's be it is sort of the hub of oil and gas and is becoming even faster growing, if you'd like, in terms of that particular area. And the countries we've invested in are about 12. We'd love to see Miami on that list over time. But one thing I will say is that corporate venture is no longer just about the world of equity. It used to be that corporations would just take a piece of the cap table and therefore own a little bit of the company. What's happening now is this major transition that really the type of corporate venture that's occurring is those that in fact can partner best will be the ones that will win. And so what you're seeing is the transactions and partnerships that we're doing with collaborative networks are in fact, we have incubations, equity, growth, to, um, go to market partnerships, licensing, co-development. I'll show you what some of these examples are and I'm gonna do these really fast because I'm gonna be out of time in just a little bit. So we not only do equity investing, but we do scaling is what we call. We wanna get the product of whatever company that they have innovated to the marketplace faster. And so what we do is we also have a non-dilutive fund, which is separate from the equity fund, that allows us to actually partner with that company using co-development efforts or distribution efforts with regards to uh, GE. And you might imagine as big as GE is, 340,000 employees, 160 different um, countries across the world, and bring those uh, products to market. And this is what we did with this company called Nanasonics, a uh, small company out of Australia, came to us. They needed to get their product to market faster. We found a way to partner with them with this non-dilutive funding, got it out to the marketplace very, very quickly. And next thing you know, we're experiencing multi-millions of uh, growth with regards to that particular product line. Here's another partnership, which is pretty cool, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Quirky, but Quirky was announced last year as a partnership with GE. And this is a, a, a company that's pretty quirky in and of itself, and what they've done is to really take the innovation model in a different way, and this is about open innovation. So you've already heard about just organic innovation through patents. You've heard about venture and investing as another way to innovate and really grab the ecosystem, and now, crowdsourcing. So what they've been able to do is they've got over 600,000 community inventors or innovators that essentially they have access to. Every Thursday night, they come up with ideas around products. They put them out to this innovation community, and the innovation community very quickly develops out these product ideas, the marketing ideas around them, and then they help co we, we help them co-develop, or they might develop it themselves, and they get products to marketplace very quickly. They've done this, some of these products in 12 weeks. We've just launched an air conditioner with them, for example, which we think is gonna be a big seller. Look for it at Home Depot in the next few um, uh, months. And we think it's gonna be great. It's a, just a, a whole new sort of uh, way to think about air conditioners, uh, to the, say the least. <clears throat> Here's another um, go-to-market partnership, and this is around the world of oil and gas. And we think about it in the following way. You can do these ventures, and we don't want to call them really joint ventures because of the structures associated to that, but we partnered up with Ferris. We have something that GE invented called CNG, compressed natural gas, and we do it in a box. Now, this is about bringing clean energy and a solution to the oil drillers right in the field. It used to be that there's all this flared gas going up and it was being wasted, so what GE's been able to do is capture that, convert it into CNG, but we could not 
get those transported to the oil drillers. Well, Ferris transports them. So it sounds very motherhood and apple pie. You bring them together and guess what? All of a sudden, you're able to provide a new solution. It's a business model solution with some technology associated to it. But what's happened is very quickly, the oil drillers win. GE wins because all of a sudden we see growth in terms of a number of our product lines, and Ferris wins because it's expanded its footprint. So a lot of growth all around with this type of innovation. I love the fact that Mary Jimenez mentioned that cities are really, really powerful, because we believe that too. And one of the things that we've done with innovation in GE is created something called Healthy Imagination, which is the other part of the, the job that I lead. And what we've done within that is something called Healthy Cities. This is a way to innovate, and this is a way to innovate through partnerships to really help this healthcare conundrum that we have. And I don't have long enough to actually go into this with the passion that I'd like to, but please know what we've done in Louisville and Houston and Cincinnati and Erie is bring together a self-assembly of the city around large self-insured employers, the folks that pay the bills, right? Everybody else comes to the table when in fact that happens. And what we've been able to do is they, the cities, actually set up their own goals as to what they want to achieve with regards to improvement in healthcare. And then we're able to really show with metrics, which GE helps measure in a number of other training programs that we provide, to really make things happen in that particular city. We're really pleased with the results that's coming out of Cincinnati and RAND is essentially gonna be able to publish that data over the next few months. Another way is all around open innovation. So we talked about open innovation with regards to crowdsourcing of inventions. Now brain health. We partnered with the NFL. You all know um, that the NFL with regards to the concussions, is, this has been a very, very important area for them. We have spent together about $60 million to come together to figure out the world of concussions and traumatic brain injury. And this is one pillar of what we're doing in brain health. The other area, and I know, I suspect that the city of Miami is also thinking about this, is the world of Alzheimer's. And if we think we've seen chronic disease as it relates to diabetes and or heart disease, you think about Alzheimer's and it's actually much bigger than the productivity hits that we've seen in diabetes and or cardiovascular disease. With either one of those, you can work. With Alzheimer's, you can't. Nor can the caregivers that have to be around you in Alzheimer's. So the world of brain health and open innovation associated to that, we've done a lot of. This is activating the innovation ecosystem. So as you think about that in Miami and bringing together a tremendous amount of folks who want to help you in your innovation challenges, you'd be surprised, how, surprised at how much the crowd really wants to help. So you might consider some of these kind of models associated to that. The last one is GrabCAD, and this is 3D printed um, manufactured bracket to hold a jet engine. Yes, a jet engine, GE, just a little tidbit. Every 75 minutes, every 75 seconds, a, a plane takes off with a GE engine in it. So we, we really care about engines. So we went out and we did an open innovation challenge to figure out if in fact these brackets could be made, if people had ideas around these brackets being made much more, um, not only stronger, but also lighter. And guess what? Someone from Indonesia actually came up with a winning solution. They took out over a third of the weight and made it even stronger, and the cost had been remarkable. So with this, not only comes the notion of innovation through grabbing the ecosystem within GE, and as you consider some of the things that you might be doing here in Miami or in your cities or in your countries that you go back to, one of the things to consider is you also have to put the processes in place to help this happen. So within GE, what we've done is we've taken the lean startup, worked with Eric Ries for the last two years, brought his models of innovation and disciplines of innovation into GE. We've created them so they can work within GE. In typical GE fashion, when we decide to do something, we industrialize it at scale. So we've put that in, it's called FastWorks. And it's about the first 5,000 executives got trained. By the end of this year, the next 100,000 will get trained. And we will roll it out um, so that this is a new way to have processes and tools and metrics that innovation needs to be able to not only foster it, but frankly support it. Last but not the least, the other notion of this, and you're already doing this with the creation of the hive and bringing entrepreneurs to bear. One of the things that we realize within GE 
is yes, we might know how to innovate. In fact, GE has been considered one of the most innovative companies in its 130 year history almost every year. But what G we also know is what's happening is it's not just about technology innovation, it's about business model innovation and you're seeing it around you in so many different places. So what we've not needed to do is bring EIRs, executives in residence or entrepreneurs in residence to come and actually work side by side at GE to help understand the, the quickness of innovation and getting those innovations to the marketplace. And this has been something very important to the DNA and the culture of GE. So with that, I will stop and let you know I'm just delighted to see that Miami is in fact doing what you're doing. It is very exciting. My mother and my sister live here. So needless to say, I'd love to be able to come back and actually do some things with the city of Miami. And I just f fundamentally believe as you create the startup ecosystem, you already have the weather and the food and the beautiful water and everything else. People will come here. And now what we need to do is create the service industries around the entrepreneurs. Thank you very much.